Welcome to Lotus Health Education and Wellness Empowerment through Health Enlightenment. One of our recent videos had a question from our viewer asking if we can go through some of the alternatives to taking medications to help lower cholesterol. And in today's video, we're gonna do the first part of a series where we'll take a look at some of the products that are available without prescriptions that have purported benefits to being able to help reduce the cholesterol by looking in today's video at these four products. Remember to like and subscribe to our content if you love our videos and just like that viewer did that made the suggestion about looking at these today, remember to drop a comment below here and let me know if there's any other health topics that you think would be good. We've got more videos coming up and many of these ideas can come from you. So let's jump straight in and start taking a look at some of these products and whether they have proven benefits or not so much yet to help with your heart health and to help you lower your cholesterol. As a pharmacy student and then later as a practicing pharmacist, one of the first over-the-counter products that I ever heard of that were able to help with your cholesterol without a prescription is red yeast rice, or you may also hear it referred to as red rice yeast. But essentially, this was one of the first products that I ever heard people rave about in this country at minimum, um, that was gonna help them with their cholesterol without them having to have a prescription. What is it? It's really what the name implies, as it's called red yeast rice. It is a type of yeast that is found on rice crops that grow in many Asian countries, particularly you'll find it a lot in Chinese culture. And in many Asian countries, they use it in a form basically as a powder. It can be mixed into food or used in supplementation at other times during the day. And people take it because in Asian culture, it's believed that it helps with your digestion for one thing. But the big thing that it is also used over there for is your heart health, your cholesterol. And since it's been brought here to the United States and as well to other parts of the world, people have begun using it and really swear by this product. So, does it work? Does it not work? What we've found is that in this particular product and others like it, it contains the same active ingredient as a product that we have available by prescription here in this country called Lovastatin. Lovastatin, as the end of the name implies, is part of that family, the statins, that are used by prescription here in the US as well as in many other areas of the world. And they are considered the go-to medications anytime we're talking about high cholesterol and needing to keep it under control and helping to stabilize plaques. What does it do? How does it work? Statins, in general, help to block a particular enzyme that is part of what we refer to as a cascade, which is basically just a sequence of events that's happening inside of your body, in the liver, where your cholesterol is being made. This process usually happens at night. If you refer in the links here below to some of our earlier videos about your cholesterol and how we test for the cholesterol and things like that, some of those steps that you heard me referring to are happening right now as we sit here watching this, especially if you're watching this in the evening time, in your body. And so basically what the statins do is that they interrupt that biochemical pathway, that process inside of your body where the cholesterol is being made. And when it does that, that helps your liver make less cholesterol and by extension is helping to slow down or we would hope in, in certain cases preventing altogether the formation of those plaques that you've seen me refer to in some of our previous videos. What this product does is that it mimics that because it has that same active product, the Lovastatin, which is again one of these commercially available products here in this country. Um, with its action in your body. So in effect, this does have an impact on your health by helping to simulate a lot of that same action that the statin products would just to a particular extent. Now, some important caveats that I have to make with this product as well as you'll hear me do it with the others that we're reviewing in this video. You wanna be very careful. If you are given a prescription by your doctor for any of those members of the statin family, and, and they're very easy to spot because statin will be in the name of all of these products, 
you want to make sure to let whether it's a physician or a nurse practitioner, a physician assistant, a pharmacist that is caring for you know that you are taking this product. The reason it'll be crucially important for us to be aware of this is because we don't want you taking both this product as well as your statin. When you do that, the thing that you have to keep in mind with this, because it has that similar ingredient in it, a lot of the side effects that you are capable of getting when you take a statin, you're going to potentially have the possibility of that happening to you with this. And so if you're taking this along with a prescription version of this, one of its cousins, if you will, you're basically going to add all of this stuff to your system that will almost certainly guarantee at some point, probably in the very near future of you starting that prescription product, that you're going to have a lot of the side effects, muscle aches, pains, certain digestive issues that come with taking just a statin by itself. When you take this and the statin, that's going to increase the likelihood of that. You wanna also make sure that if you're taking certain other prescription medications, again, because this has the same active ingredient as many of these prescription statins that we have here in the US, as well as in parts of Europe and South America, Central America, you wanna be very careful about drug interactions that this could potentially have with those other products that you're taking. If you're unsure, the best place that you can go to be able to look at a comprehensive list of these possible interactions is going to be a pharmacy. More than likely, you're gonna find this, as you can see, I have the Whole Food brand here. I've mentioned that before, I'm a big Whole Food shopper. Um, but you can also pick up different brands of this product at your pharmacy. So if you are considering taking this, if you're not a big fan of taking prescription products, make sure that you run it by a pharmacist at the very least. And definitely I would recommend talking to your healthcare team about it and have them take a look to see if this interacts with any other products that you could potentially be taking. The next product we're going to look at is this one. If you've been on the internet or on the news or on YouTube here and watched other health and wellness videos, you will almost certainly have seen this. Berberine has become very popular here in the United States, Europe, Canada, and certain other parts of the world in the last several years. But if you're of Asian heritage or if you like to practice Chinese medicine, this is something that's been very popular for quite some time, for hundreds of years. Um, because you'll find it pretty commonly. It is extracted from the root, stem, and certain other parts of a plant that's found in, in Asian countries. And it was found to have a lot of health benefits. Like I mentioned, you're gonna see it a lot in things relating to health and wellness, specific to diabetes and weight loss, because the effects that it has with lowering the blood glucose levels or the sugar circulating in your blood, as well as with weight loss, makes it very similar to a particular diabetes medicine whose name I won't even say, but again, if you watch the news and read anything online, you know exactly what diabetes medicine I'm talking about. We'll save that for another topic. In regards to its impacts on your blood sugar and things like that, separate, but for today's video with cholesterol, it is believed that with this, it works again, sort of like how we talked about red yeast rice as an alternative to taking pharmaceutical agents or prescription products. This works a little bit differently than you'll find with the red yeast rice, which like I just mentioned, that one has the same active ingredient as a statin, which you can get by prescription. In this case, this doesn't work like that by blocking an enzyme that's red yeast rice. With this one, this works by increasing the number and the function overall of a particular receptor or structure on our liver through a process called upregulation, which again just means that it increases the number of these particular structures in our liver that are responsible for the movement and the processing of your bad cholesterol or your LDL. So with doing that, it helps to decrease the amount of the bad cholesterol that will be in your body. 
It also has an effect on another structure called PCSK9, which if you're a medical professional, this should automatically signal to you about a class or family of medications that came out within recent years, again, here in the United States and in Europe, that are used by injection to lower your cholesterol called PCSK9 inhibitors. So the berberine has effects that are very similar to what we see with some of the way that those medications work. Again, because of this, just like we talked about with red yeast rice, it's very important if you are using berberine that you let your healthcare team know and if you fill prescriptions at a pharmacy, it may be a good idea to also speak to the pharmacist there and have them take a look at the medicine that you're taking and compare it against you're using the berberine to make sure that you don't have any potential interactions or other concerns. The reason for that is, does this work or not? We are finding through research that has been done on this particular supplement that some of these things that are said about it with reducing your cholesterol, the blood sugar, helping with weight loss, that there do seem to be some confirmed benefits associated with the use of the product. Again, just like with the red yeast rice, you have to keep in mind that supplements are not always evaluated by any particular organization for their purity and the consistency of the product from one bottle to another or from one company or manufacturer to another. So because of that, you just want to make sure that if you're using prescription products and things like this, that someone that is familiar with your health conditions and all of the medications that you're taking can take a look. We just want to make sure there's no interactions and whether you have cholesterol issues or especially if you have both cholesterol issues and high blood sugar and are considered a diabetic, if you're on things like insulin or certain other products and you take berberine, you want to make sure that somebody that is aware of your health conditions, make sure that adjustments don't need to be made on your diabetic medicine or your heart medicine because of the use of this product. So make sure, just like we talk about all the time here on Lotus Health, to talk to a member of your healthcare team if you're gonna be using this product. The next product that we're going to be looking at in today's video is this one here. Bergamol is a citrus plant that is found commonly throughout Southern Italy in the Calabria area of the country. And essentially, it is not really completely understood, unlike our other products that we've been talking about today, how exactly it is that this works. It was thought at one point possibly that it could have worked similar to red yeast rice and the statins by extension, but that was proven not to be the case. So right now, basically the best research that we have to try and help understand how this product helps to potentially lower cholesterol is associated with possibly something to do with the molecules that are responsible for that cascade I mentioned earlier, those steps in how our body makes cholesterol and also potentially some things relating to the transport and movement again of cholesterol within the body. So as of the time that we're recording this video, not completely understood, but does it work? There are some outcomes that have been seen in studies over the course of the last decade that do suggest that when you take it, typically, again, as something like this or in certain other forms, that you may see some cholesterol lowering, whether that's completely the result of this or not. There are people that feel that it is. There are some researchers that don't feel that it is conclusive. So again, not quite as firm as the other two products that we looked at here, but nonetheless, this product is often praised for people feeling that it is reducing their cholesterol. And in certain cases, again, from some of the studies we've seen, as well as from certain anecdotal evidence, that there is some cholesterol lowering associated with this product. The last product we're going to take a look at as part of today's video is garlic. In various forms, extracts, as well as different types of products with concentrates or powders, things in it of garlic, all throughout different cultures across the world, there have been many that believe that garlic has a lot of health benefits specific to your cardiovascular system, which again is just anything that refers to your heart. 
It's believed that it helps to lower your blood pressure and also has an effect on several components of your lipid panel, particularly that it decreases your bad cholesterol or your LDL. How it does this, the cholesterol piece, is not really fully understood. There's some research studies that think um, that in those write-ups that the cholesterol is lowered by the garlic in sort of a similar way to the red yeast rice, that garlic has properties that interfere with some of those key enzymes in that cascade or set of reactions that are responsible for how your cholesterol is made. There are other researchers that have believed that cholesterol interferes with the um, or I should say the garlic interferes with the absorption of cholesterol in your digestive system. So in various parts of your intestines or other parts of your digestive tract, that this is interfering with your body's absorption of the cholesterol and the fats and things in the food that you're eating. As of the time of the taping of this recording here, this is not something that we fully understand. The amounts also of garlic and the types of garlic, whether it is an extract versus a powder versus things like this, all of this is not fully understood. So again, if you're looking to try to naturally decrease your cholesterol, many people feel very comfortable with using garlic either in this form or increasing the amounts that they give in food using multiple cloves or uh, powders and things in their food to try and get that cholesterol lowering effect. Again, if this is something that you're looking to integrate into your health routine, just make sure to talk to your healthcare providers and that there's no concerns either with taking a supplement and certain things that may be in it that could interfere with other products that you're using or medications that you're taking, or overall, just to make sure that increasing it in your daily intake of food is going to be okay with all the other health conditions that you may have. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Hit the thumbs up button right here below the video and hit subscribe if you want to hear more great videos and content from our channel on YouTube. And as always, remember that while we appreciate the trust and confidence that you may give to us here on Lotus Health, make sure to consult with your healthcare team, particularly with topics like today's where we're looking at products that you can potentially add that many of them in the end end up having effects very similar to prescription medications. It's always important to talk to the healthcare team that's caring for you, the pharmacist and their team that's filling your prescriptions or other members of the healthcare team that may be familiar with things that you're taking and can give you the best advice using information from sources like this as well as other things that you may consult or conversations you may have. Always talk to your healthcare team before you make any changes to your health techniques. We hope that you enjoyed today's video content here on Lotus Health Education and Wellness. Remember to always check back on our channel for great new content that we have coming out. And as always, drop a comment here below the video with any recommendations or feedback on our videos to help make even more content for the future. We look forward to seeing you here on Lotus Health Education and Wellness, where we have empowerment through health enlightenment. Take care.